Since most of you will have your trailer shipped directly to you, we wanted to give you a little walk around of your new Expedition 2.0 and talk about a few things that you need to know before your trailer arrives. So let's get into it. Your trailer will arrive on a flatbed truck and the driver will offload the trailer to the ground. As you can see, all the trailers come shrink wrapped to protect it during transportation. Once the shrink wrap is carefully removed, you can start exploring your new Expedition 2.0. Next thing we want to cover is what you need before your trailer arrives. So if you just opted in for the regular two inch ball, you want to make sure you show up with a hitch ball mount with your two inch ball. Now, if you opted in for the max coupler articulating hitch, just get a hitch ball mount without that two inch ball because the max coupler is going to have two halves and then one half is going to replace that two inch ball. The next thing is you want to make sure your vehicle has a seven pin connection to hook up your trailer so that powers all your lights, your tail lights and your signal lights. And for some vehicles like the Land Cruiser and Forerunner, they locate that seven pin connection way underneath. So you may have to get a seven pin connection from Amazon or something like that that will extend that cable to reach all the way underneath your vehicle. And of course, last but not least is your license plate registration or some sort of permit dependent on your state so you can transport your trailer from point A to point B. Okay, let's get your trailer connected to your tow vehicle. So if you just opted in for the regular two inch ball, make sure you show up with a hitch mount with a two inch ball, you're all set. In this case, we have the max coupler articulating hitch. So you'll wanna show up with the hitch mount without the two inch ball, because inside your trailer, it's gonna be located in the box or inside the main cabin. You're gonna find the yoke for the max coupler all wrapped up. You wanna unwrap it, of course, and this is going to slide into the hole where the two inch ball is normally located, tighten up everything, and you'll see here as we have on this vehicle, it's all ready to go. The yoke is there, ready to go to receive the other half of the max coupler. You'll find a pin like this and a cotter pin. So line up your vehicle, lower your trailer down, Nice thing is these are really easy to connect, line up the hole. And if it's a little tight, just raise or lower your jack and it'll take that pressure off of the pin as it's sliding in, put your cotter pin and you're all set. All right, so next thing is you wanna connect your seven pin. What the seven pin's gonna do, of course, is connect your brake lights, signal lights, and a charge line that gives you a trickle charge for your batteries while you're driving. So plug that into your seven pin on your vehicle. Of course, you wanna make sure before you show up that your vehicle is equipped with a seven pin connection. And cross your chains, connect. There's spots to hook them in on each side of the hitch. You wanna connect your breakaway cable. Your breakaway cable, of course, as it sounds, is if anything ever happens, your trailer becomes disconnected you're gonna connect this where the chains are connected to your vehicle. And if the trailer ever pulls away and uh, gets disconnected, it's gonna pull this pin out and apply those electric brakes and stop your trailer. So that's how you connect your trailer to your tow vehicle. One of the most important things that we recommend is to read your manual from front to back. Most of the questions that you may have will be explained in the manuals that can be found in the pouch that arrived with your trailer. Your extra set of keys will also be found in this pouch, so make sure to look for those. Sometimes you will find a key in the front storage bin or the delivery driver will provide you one. The optional stabilization jacks are a great way to firm up the trailer, especially when you have a rooftop tent deployed. Each trailer comes with a manual crank handle to deploy the jacks. Insert the crank handle on the jack and turn the handle clockwise to lower the jack down to the ground. And make sure to only use these jacks to stabilize the trailer and not to level the trailer. You always want to level the trailer by driving up on something like a rock or leveling blocks. Let's walk through a couple things that you need to know about the electrical components. The first thing is the location of the main circuit breaker. In this configuration you'll see it's located at the back panel 
but in some configurations, depending on the inverter that you chose, it may be located on the right hand side. The circuit breaker cuts off the power to the trailer so you are not draining the batteries. So you'll want to make sure that the circuit breaker is in the off position when you're not using the trailer and it's in storage. When you want to run everything off of your batteries, then you simply turn it to on and your fridge, lights and everything else will run off of the batteries. The next thing we want to cover is the inverter. In this trailer we have the Xantrax 2000 watt inverter, but your trailer may have a different inverter depending on what you ordered. Either way, you'll want to turn the inverter on only when you want to plug a 110 item into it. This would include things like laptops and other household items that you would plug into the wall at home. If you're just running the fridge, lights, and USB charging ports, then there is no need to turn the inverter on. It's important to remember that the inverter is pulling power from the batteries when it's on. So if you don't need it, then turn it off to save your battery power. The last thing we want to cover is how to charge and maintain your batteries. The best way to charge your batteries is by the shore power located here at the front of the box. This is just a regular extension cord that can be plugged into any 110 outlet. If possible, we recommend that you plug your trailer into shore power when it's in storage so you keep those batteries topped up. The next way to get power to your batteries is by plugging a solar panel into the port right below the shore power. An important thing to know is that the solar will not charge a dead battery. Solar will only help maintain your batteries. So you'll want to make sure that you plug your panel in as soon as you get to your campsite so you can get that consistent trickle charge to your batteries. The last way to get a charge to your batteries is through the seven pin connection from your vehicle. This is also only a trickle charge and the amount of charge coming from your vehicle varies from vehicle to vehicle. When your trailer arrives, it does not come with the charge line connected to the batteries. However, this is a simple process that we leave up to you to connect, but you'll see a junction box behind the fridge where all the wires are running into. You will need to remove the cover and refer to your manual for the instructions on how and where to connect the charge line. The drop-down sink and stove in the Expedition deploys in seconds and comes with a custom-made sink that is built to survive the off-road train that this trailer is built for. To deploy the kitchen, unlock the powder-coated aluminum box and make sure to press on the door as you turn the latch. Pull on the rubber latch to release the drop-down kitchen and hold onto the drop-down to support it as you lower it down. The back side of the door has a bracket that supports the drop-down and keeps the door from swinging in the wind. Simply insert the bracket into the slot on the back of the drop-down to support it. To use the sink, you will need to turn on the water pump and adjust the hot water. There are a few options for draining the sink. One is to connect a hose to the bottom of the sink and run it onto the ground away from the trailer. The second is to have a bucket positioned under the sink drain to catch the water. Start the stove by turning on the propane, then turn the gas knob to light and hold down the gas knob while clicking the ignition switch. Close the stove lid or use the supplied sink lid for additional workspace to prepare food or for additional storage space while you are camping. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the water pump switch, the water heater, and the shower. The actual water pump is located under the sink, but the switch for the water pump is located in the side box with the on-demand water heater. Flick this switch on and you're ready to start using your sink or shower. To the right is the on-demand water heater. Simply turn on the propane, flick the switch located underneath the water heater to on, and then adjust the gas and the water flow to get your desired temperature and you're all set. There are two batteries located behind this plastic cover that powers the igniter, so if you have an issue with starting a water heater, then it may be time to replace the batteries. Once you have your water pump on and your hot water adjusted, then you're ready to use the shower. The shower nozzle has a long hose that can reach into a nearby privacy room, and there's an on-off switch located on the shower nozzle so you don't waste water. Next to the water heater is the optional furnace. Make sure to always have the propane on before turning the thermostat on, otherwise it might give you an error code. To turn the furnace on, just click the button with the flame icon located on the thermostat inside the cabin here. And then adjust the temperature by using the up and down buttons. 
It may take a little bit to start blowing it hot air the first time that you try, but be patient and it will fire up. If you received your trailer during hot weather, then there's a good chance the temperature inside the cabin may be above your thermostat setting, and therefore it will not start. So keep that in mind when you're first setting things up and trying out your new furnace. If you do get an error code, then you have two options to reset the furnace. One is a soft reset, and to perform the soft reset, you insert a pin into this hole and gently push. If this does not work, then you may need to do a hard reset. And to do that, you will need to press a button that is located behind these cables and located under the rubber seal. Give that a push and your furnace will reset. Of course, running the furnace, stove, and water heater is a propane tank. You want to make sure that you always have the propane tank purged when filling it up to ensure you have a full tank of gas. Purging is just a step in the filling up process where they make sure all of the air is pushed out of the tank as it fills up with propane. Holding the tank to the trailer is a custom made bracket with the option of adding a padlock for extra security. Inside the cabin and right above the door are the light switches for the outside porch lights and you'll find one on each side of the trailer. The switch for the interior lights is located here on the control panel. You also have another display to control your inverter and a 110 plug-in located at the top of the panel. There are two USB charging ports located on each side of the plug-in and finally the thermostat for the furnace that we walked through earlier. There's a remote hanging on the wall to control the upgraded max fan and if you opted in to keep the standard max fan then you will manually control the fan by pressing the buttons located around the fan on your ceiling. And finally, we have the optional bed that folds into a couch. To fold it into the couch mode, simply fold the half with the smaller sections up and slide the bottom over to the other side of the trailer. And you now have a place to hang out inside the trailer. We hope this video was helpful with getting you familiar with your new Expedition 2.0. And don't forget to watch all the other videos we have on our YouTube channel. We hope you love your trailer and we can't wait to see all the adventures that you go on.